Well, good evening, everyone. Welcome to Vintage Church. Uh, if you're joining us online, we're so glad that you're with us. It's Good Friday. Uh, and Good Friday is a somber day of remembrance. We remember the fact that our Lord Jesus went to the cross and died. Um, and it seems ironic to call it good, but it's good because we remember that in the death of Christ, we see the death of death itself. Our worship tonight has three aims. As we look at this redemptive work of Jesus, we want to narrate and remember the final events of Jesus' life leading into his death. Uh, to open up the meaning of these events for our understanding of God and the redemption accomplished by Jesus on the cross. And we want to invite our hearts to be renewed in prayer and dedication to the crucified God, Jesus. Uh, so if you would, join me in prayer. Holy and loving God, as we prepare to set aside our busyness to focus intently on Jesus' suffering and death, we ask for eyes to see all the amazing things that Jesus' death means for understanding you, your love, and our salvation. Help us to see you, God, we pray, in the name of the Son, Jesus, by the power of your Holy Spirit. Amen. If you would, uh, stand and, and join me in this call to worship. Who has believed what he has heard from us? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we esteemed him stricken smitten by God and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the chastisement that brought us peace. And with his wounds we are healed. Let us go to the Father through the Son by the Spirit as we sing.
prostrate in the garden on the ground your maker lies on the bloody tree behold him sinner will this not so First scripture reading tonight is from Mark chapter 15, verses 21 through 43. And they compelled a passerby, Simon of Cyrene, who was coming in from the country, the father of Alexander and Rufus, to carry his cross. And they brought him to the place called Golgotha, which means place of a skull. And they offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he did not take it. And they crucified him and divided his garments among them, casting lots for them to decide what each should take. And it was the third hour when they crucified him. And the inscription of the charge against him read, The King of the Jews. And with him they crucified two robbers, one on his right and one on his left. And those who passed by derided him, wagging their heads and saying, Aha, you who would destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days, save yourself and come down from the cross. So also the chief priests with the scribes mocked him to one another, saying, He saved others. He cannot save himself. Let the Christ, the King of Israel, come down now from the cross, that we may see and believe. Those who were crucified with him also reviled him. And when the sixth hour had come, there was darkness over the whole land until the ninth hour. And at the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And some of the bystanders hearing it said, behold, he is calling Elijah. And someone ran and filled a sponge with sour wine, put it on a reed and gave it to him to drink, saying, wait, let us see whether Elijah will come down to, t- will come to take him down. And Jesus uttered a loud cry and breathed his last. And the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. And when the centurion who stood facing him saw that in this way he breathed his last, he said, truly this man was the son of God. There were also women looking on from a distance, among whom were Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James the younger and and of Joseph and Salome. When When he was in Galilee, they followed him and ministered to him. And there were also many other women who came up with him to Jerusalem. of one world. 
we wait with each other as those who inflict wounds on one another. Be merciful to us as those who deny justice to others. Be merciful to us. Black screen. those who put our trust in power. Be merciful to us. As those who are greedy, be merciful to us. As those who put others on trial, be merciful to us. As those who refuse to receive, be merciful to us. As those who are afraid of the world's torment, be merciful. Father, we just come to you this morning, this afternoon, uh, in need of mercy, in need of your grace. Our need is great, Lord. And we thank you that, that our access to you is, is readily available now because of the curtain that was torn.
Our second scripture reading today comes from John 19, verse 28 to 30. After this, Jesus, knowing that all was now finished, said, To fulfill the scripture, I thirst. A jar full of sour wine stood there. So they put a sponge full of the sour wine on a hyssop branch and held it to his mouth. When Jesus had received the sour wine, he said, It is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. Will you go ahead and join me in prayer? Father, we're so grateful. We're grateful for the cross. We're grateful for the crucified Messiah, the suffering servant who walked wounded the road to Calvary. And the wounds didn't stop there was killed on our behalf. As we look to the cross, show us the glory of Jesus, in whose name we pray. Amen. It is finished. It is finished. Uh, no three words in all of history have carried with it the weight, the power of those three words, it is finished. Those words that our Lord Jesus uttered on the cross Think about the course of human history. It is finished. That declaration from Jesus himself changes the direction not only of uh, 11 men and a number of women who would then become hundreds and thousands and who would leave Jerusalem, who would leave that place fearful and doubting, not knowing what's coming on Sunday. Not only would those words change their lives, but their changed lives would change literally the course of human history. We say week in and week out that Vintage is a church for doubters and seekers and followers to learn to worship Jesus together. And whether you're a doubter or a seeker or a follower, you cannot deny the impact of the cross, of Christ, of the work and and the lives of, of those who witnessed it and those who determined that their lives could not be the same because of it. All of history. It is finished. So there's a question that we have to ask, isn't there? There's a question that each one of us has to ask, that we as a people have to ask when we come to this text, when we come to John 19, and when we hear Jesus say, it is finished. And that question is, what? What is finished? What is finished? What exactly has Jesus done? What is it that Jesus is talking about when he says those those three words, it is finished? Now, we find ourselves in John, and one of the things that I love about the four Gospels is that uh, each of the Gospelers tell us a slightly, it's the same story, and the unity is remarkable, but they have different emphases and different focuses, and it gives us this big, robust, theological, historical picture of who Jesus was and what he did. And here, John chooses this sequence of events to tell in this order. Let's read it again. After this, 
Now this is everything leading up to the crucifixion and actually the crucifixion. And then in one of the more touching moments that I'd love to touch on some other time, Jesus tells John that his mother is now John's mother. And after this, John says, knowing that all was now finished to fulfill Scripture, Jesus said, I thirst. Now, it it didn't have to be to fulfill Scripture, right? It could have made perfect sense. Up on the cross, after a day of carrying wood, of walking, of beating, of scourging, at this point, we don't need to go into detail. We have in the past. You'll hear it from time to time, the detail of the brutality that Jesus suffered. At this point, it would make sense that he was thirsty, but John says he did this in order to fulfill the scriptures. He says this intentionally. And what does he receive? A jar full of sour wine stood there. So they put a sponge full of the sour wine on a hyssop branch, And held it to his mouth. And when he had received and drank the wine, then he says, it is finished. Now, I'm going to go ahead and spoil it for you. I'm going I'm to give you the end first. What is Jesus saying is finished? Well, if you've come to church long enough, you've heard this, and you need to have it reiterated. If this is your first time maybe at a, a Good Friday service or even in a, a church environment, and you're hearing about Jesus on the cross, what is finished? It is the entirety of the redemptive work and plan that Jesus had given to him by God the Father for his people. Jesus had finished it all. He had done everything that he had come to do. But we need to break that down even more. And in order to do that, I want us to see just a few things. The first is this, that he intentionally says, I thirst, so that he could drink the wine. And in drinking the wine, then say, it is finished. Just A couple weeks ago, as we were studying the last days of Jesus, we were in Luke and we were looking at the Last Supper. Let's for a second go back to the Last Supper. Now, one of the things that we know is according to Luke, this supper that they're taking is a Seder meal. It's, it, the, the table has been prepared so that they can uh, take the Passover together and they eat the Passover meal and there's bread and there's wine and as is customary at the Seder, there's bread, wine, there's, there's lamb. Luke doesn't have lamb in his story, although he does, but we'll get there. But they take the bread and the wine and as is customary, The one who is at the head of the table, in this case Jesus, will break the bread and explain what it means again. And so as Jesus breaks the bread, he says, this is my body. And in the same manner, he takes the cup and as he pours it, he says, this is my blood. He's giving new meaning to this Passover feast that they had taken for years and years and years. All of these symbols, all of these ideas, all of this ritual, it points to me and the work that I'm going to do. As bread is torn, so too will I be. As wine is poured out, so too will my blood be. But listen to what Jesus says as he's doing this, take it now, the cup, and divide it amongst yourselves. For I tell you that from now on, you, I, sorry, that's important, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. And now, as we look through the Gospels, we look and we see Jesus, after this point, actually denying wine, denying wine, being offered and denying until we come to John 19. And what does Jesus do? In order to fulfill the scripture, he says, I thirst. And what's handed to him? 
wine. Jesus says, I won't drink the fruit of the vine until the kingdom has come. And as he drinks it, he says, it's finished. And in this, I want to suggest to us two things. Two things that will help us understand the weight and the gravity of exactly what Jesus is saying is finished. The first is this, the Passover meal. Jesus is saying it is finished. The Passover meal and work of God is done. That Passover that began all of those years back, all of those millennia before, when God rescued Israel from slavery and captivity to Egypt, Jesus is saying we remember that year after year, and it's pointing to the work that I would do. Do you remember what happened in the Passover? We get through nine plagues, and on the tenth, it's the death of the firstborn of all of the house of Egypt and of anyone who does not have the blood of the lamb spread on the doorpost. Now, if it's a Passover meal, the most important part of the meal is the lamb, and yet Luke and actually all of the gospel accounts that have a last supper omit it. Why? Because Jesus, Hebrews tells us, is our great Passover lamb. The work that Jesus does on the cross is Passover work. In other words, Jesus liberates his people from slavery and bondage to sin. Just as the Israelites were freed from slavery to Egypt, so Christ has freed us from slavery and bondage to sin and death. This is good news. In fact, the greatest news that there is. But there's more. Jesus says in Luke, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. We spoke about this last week. The Gospel of Luke and the Gospel of John, in fact, all of the Gospels, don't simply tell us the story of Jesus who becomes personal Lord and Savior to those who believe. Now, this is true. As we believe and acknowledge Jesus as Lord and Savior, we enter into the fullness of the blessing and the forgiveness and the grace, the mercy, and the kingdom of God that Jesus has established. But the fact is this, and I said it last week and I'll say it again. There is no such thing as a personal Lord. Just like there's no such thing as a personal king. A king is a king of a kingdom and of a people. And when Jesus says it is finished, Jesus means that I have now been exalted and crowned and enthroned as king. Even before, and we know now that he sits in the right hand of the glory of God, the Father. But as we spoke about on Sunday, and if you weren't here, I'll just briefly remind you that the the triumphal entry of Jesus all the way to Jesus being crucified on the cross mirrored the Roman enthronement of a Caesar intentionally because Jesus was being crowned and proclaimed and coronated king. And so when he says it is finished, He means the Passover is finished. The redemptive work, all of the sacrifices can come to an end because God has delivered his people. And he means the inauguration of the kingdom, that in-breaking reality where on heaven is on earth, where it's done on earth as it is in heaven. That prayer that we pray in Durham as it is in heaven, uh, on earth as it is in heaven, the inauguration of that kingdom is complete because the king has been enthroned. So we can call this day good when innocence was murdered. When Our Savior suffered 
when the spotless lamb was offered up as sacrifice and propitiation for sin. We can call it good. We can call it good when Jesus is mocked and scorned because their mockery and their scorning (laughs) had the reverse effect that they thought. The dramatic reversals that we see all come to light on the cross. All of Scripture leads to this and of all of history is changed by it. So what are we to do? What are we, the people who hear the words of our Savior, it is finished, to do with this pronouncement that Passover has been finished, that the redemptive work of God is complete, that the the liberating work of our Savior is done, and that his kingdom has been inaugurated? We're to live in the fullness, and to live as though that is true. This is what faith does. We hear the story, and we believe it, and then it changes how we act. We actually now participate in it. Good Friday is a somber day for us because we remember that our Savior was crucified, and therefore, so too must we be. We must be crucified with Christ. So that it's no longer us who live, but Jesus in us. And this can happen. And do you know why? Because it is finished. You've been set free. The redeeming work of Christ the King is done. But even then, even then, the disciples were scattered. And the women, though they stayed, were full of grief, sorrow, and fear. And so too would our hearts be. But guys, Sunday's coming. And there's a whole other celebration to come. I can't wait. I can't. But for now, we remember Christ has been crucified and it is finished. Would you pray with me? God, we thank you for your son, Jesus, our great paschal lamb, whose blood causes you to pass over, to pass over our sin, to pass over our shame, our guilt, our doubt. You see it, God you forgive we thank you for Jesus who delivers us as Moses delivered your people from bondage to Egypt who delivers us from chains and enslavement who sets the captives free God we praise you that Jesus is a king enthroned on high. He's not a king like the kings of this world who advance their kingdoms through force, through bloodshed of others. But he's a king who advances his kingdom through self-sacrifice and love. We lift high the cross. We lift high the cross. Amen. Oh my
Judas sold you for thirty. I'd have done it for less. Oh my soul. present you holy and blameless and above reproach before him. So brothers and sisters, through the cross of Jesus, through the cross of Christ, we are forgiven and reconciled to God. Praise be.
nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the Lord that makes me white as snow. Oh, no other found I know. Nothing but the blood of boast of anything except the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by which the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. I invite you now just to go in silence, go in peace, and we will see you Sunday.